Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to Bumblebee. My name is Teresa and today we're talking ancient astronauts and the top 10 alien hieroglyphics found in ancient history. We're starting off the countdown with the familiar Nazca lines. We've talked about them in some of our other alien videos as well as ancient art videos so you may know what I'm referring to. These are the best known geoglyphs in the world and were made sometime between the 200 BC and 800 AD point. They're more than 800 feet long white line work etched into the Peruvian desert. The longest running straight for over a mile. They're alongside 300 some odd shapes and 70 figures and animals. The biggest shapes stretch nearly 1200 feet across and are the best viewed for, and are best viewed from air and certain vantages on nearby hills. Scientists suspect the Nazca drawings are as many as two millennia old and because of their age, size and visibility from above and mysterious nature, the lines are often cited as some of the best examples of alien handiwork on earth. Otherwise how would an ancient culture have been able to make such huge designs in the desert without being able to fly? Why? And why? Eric von Duncken, in his 1968 book, Chariots of the Gods, proposed that the ancient Nazca was landing site for extraterrestrial spacecrafts. The alien being supposedly imparted the local people with special knowledge and technology before returning to their home planet. After the departure of these ancient astronauts, the Nazca culture built a series of giant images and designs as messages to the extraterrestrial beings whom they viewed as their gods. You may remember debating this with your friends when it trended on Twitter, the helicopter hierarchy. Thandera's Hathor temple has a bunch of funky stuff going on that we'll talk about in this video. The first being this. What you're seeing is hieroglyphics and among them is a carving of what looks like a helicopter, even airplane or submarine, depending on how far your imagination goes. But I feel like the helicopter is evident enough for all of us to notice. Ancient astronaut believers have leapt on this, seeing a representation of modern technology in antiquity, knowledge perhaps given to the Egyptians by time travelers or extraterrestrial entities. As much as you may not believe in aliens, the explanation that archaeologists have for this actually does like suck. They're trying to pitch things like hieroglyphics depicting modern technology as an example of pareidolia, our tendency to perceive a pattern and meaning that isn't actually there. Because predicting a helicopter specifically exactly how it would look to a T is just a normal pattern recognition stuff. Usually pareidolia is perceiving a human face in the tree, not predicting a whole scale invention. One viable argument however is in ancient Egypt it was common for hieroglyphics to be recarved over time, especially when a new pharaoh came into power. Digital imaging has shown that these carvings are overlaid, one original from the reign of Seti I and was remade for the reign of Ramses II. So archaeologists believe that the plaster used to cover the Seti I inscription eroded over time, which led to the appearance of a single combined image. What do you think? And while we're inside Dendera, watch your step because the melted stone staircase is here. Maybe not necessarily a hieroglyph or a petroglyph, but it's altered stone and people associate it with aliens, so it fits my parameters. Make it work for yours. This is the Temple of Hathor. Look at that beauty. This site in Dendera is an option for travelers who want to take a honeymoon somewhere unexpected. Intricate figures and finely carved hieroglyphics haven't lost their charm over the years on young lovers. Now this is one of the staircases that leads out to the roof of the iconic Temple of Hathor at Dendera. It's built in pure granite and sandstone during the Platonic rule around 300 BC. Yet the stone steps appear to be melted, and it's hard to imagine what could have managed to melt solid stone steps seeing as the temperature needed to melt solid marble is 1339 Celsius. It is believed that some of Dendera was built over another pre-existing site, as we know the priests would use this staircase to access the shrine of Hathor on the temple roof. The images on the walls on either side of this passageway even depict the line of priests who are carrying offerings up this shrine. Ancient alien believers theorize that the temple roofs were used to communicate with aliens that Egyptians worshipped as gods and it could also be the reason that the stairs are melted. Perhaps it's the result of an alien landing or technology. Maybe the temple was built on a powerful alien site and the melting is a result of that. Or of an alien device once stored in this mighty and godly temple. Who knows? A break from Dendera before we revisit its light. Let's talk about the Topak Maze. An archaeological site located south of Interstate 40 near Needles, California. And while it's hypothesized to be a geoglyph, the purpose, age, and creators of the lines are highly disputed. A 1978 study by Arda Demheisnell proposed that the lines were prehistoric and had some sort of religious or ceremonial significance to the native Mojave people, and the modern Mojave people believe that this maze is a part of a spiritual portal to the next life where bad souls get lost and good souls find their portal to the afterlife. Early experts believe that the warriors returning from battle would also run through the maze, leaving any bad spirits behind in it. Regardless, 
regardless as to why it was created, the magnitude and magnificence of this geoglyph can't be disputed. How long this geoglyph will be able to withstand the elements is unknown, and how it has for an approximate 600 years is also unknown. What is known is the long-standing belief of the power and correlation of the site with souls of the dead. Many people have pilgrimaged over to the site in hopes of spiritual relief. This has inspired theories of alien involvement in the creation of the mass lines maze and its effect on a person being alien technology. The Blythe Intaglios are sisters, not twins, with the Nazca lines. Located about four hours from Los Angeles in the city of Blythe, the Blythe Intaglios are the most well known of over 200 of them in the Colorado desert. That's right, we got a desert full of doodles and it's the only known desert Intaglios in North America. And while pictographs such as mountain lions, birds, snakes, and geometrics are strewn all over this desert, the human figures are only found near the Colorado River. The largest of the etchings is over 170 feet in length. These figures are so immense that many of them were not observed by non-natives until the 1930s as they're best seen from air. So if you didn't pay attention to the ground as you were walking, it was easy to miss them if you aren't looking for them. Nobody knows what the figures represent, but they have some theories and you can read about them on the plaques next to each fenced in area if you visit the site. Many of the engravings are believed to date from the prehistoric period, but their age and identity of their creators are still uncertain even as local indigenous clans have not claimed the making of the site, but some have claimed to use them for ancestral worship. The biggest mystery still remains how they made the giant works of art in the first place without being able to check their work from overhead. The correlation of the Nazca lines and the Blythe and Tiglios is a natural for alien enthusiasts in the way that pyramids can be connected. There are once again theories of alien landing pads or dedications and thanks to aliens above from humans below via artwork. And back to Hathor Temple for Dandera Light. And it's not even actually a light, so major punk with that one. It's actually a stone depiction of what's potentially a light located in a long underground passageway directly beneath the main temple that is completely covered in carvings. According to Egyptologists, the bulb-like structure represents the womb of Nut, the goddess of the sky, which is also a common depiction of the night. It's been a major source of controversy in Egyptian history since many fringe historians interpret the depiction as evidence of a modern lighting system, similar in appearance to a crook's tube. Supporters of this theory claim that electrical light would give an explanation to the absence of lamp black deposits in many discovered tombs in Egypt. The Dendera light is often used in similar context as the Baghdad battery in the assumption that ancient cultures were much more advanced than we believe today. Naturally, this opens the doors for conspiracy involving aliens as it's often assumed that ancient civilizations found technological advancements through their intervention. There is a mainstream explanation from Egyptologists that makes the most sense and collaborates with other transcriptions in the temple, but we want irrational alien theories, so we're going to ignore that and move on to the Atacama Desert Geoglyphs. Suck it Nazca lines because these glyphs are monstrous, covering 150 plus square kilometers compared to Nazca's only 250 square kilometers. However, there are similarities outside of their whopping size difference, so maybe I'm speaking too soon. Both Nazca and these Atacama glyphs had multiple symbolic or ritual purposes, but the Atacama glyphs also had a vital role in the transportation network connecting great South American civilizations. Using artifacts and stylistic characters, archaeologists believe the earliest was first constructed between 600 and 1500 AD. The widely varied geoglyphs are in geometric, animal, and human forms, and are in about 50 different types. Some geoglyphs are found in isolation, some are in panels up to 50 figures. The most frequent type of geoglyph is geometric forms, such as circles, circles with dots, rectangles, crosses, arrows, parallel lines, all sorts of stuff. This Atacama Desert is known for alien association of all kind. In 2018, a tiny alien skeleton found here pretty much broke the internet. It was actually technically found in 2002. There's the Blood Red Lagoon, mummies that are older than the ones in Egypt, and some of the world's clearest stargazing can be done here. Another alien associate part of Atacama is the Atacama Giant. I wanted to talk about it separately because it deserves its own attention. It's the largest Atacama desert carving, 390 feet tall and carved into a hillside. It's undoubtedly alien in appearance. It is the largest prehistoric anthropomorphic. It has been suggested that the petroglyph represents a shaman, spiritual figure, or deity, but there is little evidence to corroborate these claims. Scientists think that the Atacama giant was likely an astronomical guide, as the lines that stretch off of the figure's head predict the movements of the moon and can be used to map the changing of seasons. By knowing this, the day, crop cycle, and weather patterns, they could determine a lot. Or, as some believe, perhaps it really is a depiction of the alien who created it or them. Several of them represent enigmatic anthropomorphic figures with elongated or ovular heads along with geometric patterns. Personally, I think he's creepy as hell, so let's
let's just shuffle on. Next up is the Carle Su Screamer. You may recall the Carle Su from the top 10 ancient alien discoveries that will confuse you video. These ruins are the oldest ruins of the oldest civilization in all of South America. The site dates back 4,000, even 5,000 years, making it one of the oldest cities in the world. This site consists of six stone pyramids that were found next to large amphitheaters, ceremonial rooms, altars, and many other structures. And after excavation started on this site in 2001, there was a lot to discover, such as treasures, history, and lore. And just half mile southwest at the city's pyramids and mounds, the Corral Screamer. Notice the D-shaped head and its large gaping mouth with wild raked hair. The facial features include a sliced half nose and sagging almond shaped eyes. Its mouth appears to be open in a horrified screech. This geoglyph is similar to the screaming bleeding figures found etched into stone walls at the site called Sanchana in Cosma Valley, 150 miles to the north. But like those, it's unclear what this petroglyph means. It is believed to have been constructed around the same time as Corral and have been associated to a nearby ceremonial site. Many wonder how this face was made, similar to the Nazca and Blythe lines, without any vantage point. And for what purpose? This is far less easy to brush off a ceremonial than something like patterns, squiggles, and lines. Unfortunately, Corral Sioux history is mostly lost, as is its civilization. However, it's drawn lots of alien attention, as lots of temples are built at the 450 AD point. Its circular formation is similar to many others. It's been assumed to have a landing pad of sorts, and there is belief that astronomically it's connected to sites nearby. And the last on our list is the alien art of Chattisigar. I'm sorry if I say that wrong. These paintings are vividly red and in remarkable condition. Located about 130 kilometer from Rapur, the caves come under the Villa Chandelier and Gotatolia land in India. Extensive research is needed for further findings. Chattisigar and its surrounding areas presently doesn't have any such experts on prehistoric or archaeological findings who could give clarity on subject, so it's about patiently waiting for that access. In the meantime, however, there are several beliefs that about paintings among locals in the villages. While a few worship the paintings, others narrate stories that they've heard from ancestors about Rohella people, aka the small sized ones, who used to land from the sky in a round shaped flying object and take away one or two persons of the village who never returned. Could be onto something, there is a cave painting depicting a craft with fan like antenna and three legs for a vehicle stand, but that could just be a coincidence. The paintings are done in natural colors and the paints have hardly faded despite the years. The strangely carved figures are seen holding weapon like objects and don't have clear features, oftentimes missing a nose and mouth. Some pictures it appears that the people are even wearing a form of space suit, to which archaeologist J.R. Bagard replies, we can't refute the possibility of imagination by prehistoric men, humans usually fancy such things. He continues to say that art depictions are similar to that of aliens seen in Hollywood and Bollywood, adding that the findings suggest that humans in prehistoric times may have seen or imagined things from other planets, which creates curiosity among the peoples and the researchers. Well that's all it for today's alien hunt. You can tuck the moon boots away and take off the tinfoil hat, but don't forget to like and subscribe.